Hello! Today's stories come from r slash I don't work here, lady. We've got three stories today, starting with I worked here six months ago. In the times before a personal issue happened in November, I, a 17 year old female, worked at a local hobby store named after an archangel. I stocked shelves, cleaned up after people, tried all the markers on anything nearby, and would leave them in whatever cubby that was in reach. And I would cashier a few nights a week, making the big money to afford my daily girly needs. I quit working there because of the personal issue. This past Monday, I went in there to get some art supplies for a project the therapist recommended and to see how I feel about going back out into the world. I was dressed in a large black baggy hoodie and baggy sweats. Nothing like an employee. My earbuds were in but not on. They dull the noise but don't completely make it silent. I heard the click, click, click of someone wearing heels. A distinctive sound. The sound stopped and I could see a shadow darken me as I looked at drawing pads. My heart started speeding up and I was beginning to sweat. Then she said those words. Excuse me. It wasn't dripping with contempt. Yet. Yes, I say back. Where are the little painting cups to paint the porcelain Christmas villages? She did ask nicely. I tell her I don't know. And she got mad. You do know where they are. So where are they? I step back and begin to shake. I don't know. I don't work here. Yes, you do. You helped me find stuff last Halloween. Quit lying to me and tell me where the paints are. I begin to have a panic attack. It's been six months since I worked here and the store's been rearranged. Oh my God, you kids are so lazy. You think because there's a worker shortage, you can just do what you want and not get fired for mouthing off to customers? I'll show you how freaking wrong you are when I get your manager and get you fired. I dropped the supplies I was holding and turned to leave. I'm not crying. I just want to be away from this crazy lady. Then she grabs me. As I'm spun to face her again, she shoves her finger in my face and the screeching is piercing, even with the headphones on. And things went to black. When I came back to reality, I was being checked on by paramedics. A few police officers were standing around with the lady in handcuffs screeching, I didn't do anything to her. She's just crazy. I can't believe this place hires crazy people. I ended up going to the hospital. The lady is being charged with assault, and I'll find out more in the future, since this is just a few days old. What happened to me? I read the statements from the police report, and from what a few former co-workers told me, when she grabbed me, I fell to the ground going into the fetal position, whimpering that, I don't work here, I don't work here, I don't work here. Some customer saw what was going on and got the manager. Someone else called 911. The lady just stood there with her mouth fish gaping and repeating, I didn't touch her. After a night in the hospital, a visit with my therapist, I'm home and waiting for a delivery from Amazon with the supplies I went to get. I'm glad the world is homebound friendly these days. I know the title and thumbnail kind of lend to it being somewhat funny, and even the story on its own is, except poor OP has very legitimate mental health issues from a run-in with a previous Karen, according to the comments. Hence the reaction and curling into a ball. I'm so glad the lady got arrested and charged, even just for grabbing her. Let's see what others thought. Hatch Ferntree said, There's a worker shortage, so I'm going to demand your boss fire you because he definitely wants to waste time looking for a hard-to-find replacement. Karen Logic. Someone else said, No offense to your condition saying this, but she is the one who needs to be restricted going out in public even more than you restrict yourself. She sounded weak. I hope you have zero problems dealing with her and she gets the exact inferno she deserves. And final word goes to Green Pepper King. Lady grabs you. Same lady. I didn't touch her. And she's calling other people crazy? Next up is, actual employee and owner mistakes me for employee. I recently got reminded of this one. I was a 13 to 14 year old female who tried to buy new jeans because her last one got accidentally ripped apart by an overjoyed puppy. Broke me got in this jean store with a big 50% off sign and started to look around. The store was very confusing. Not big, but a tiny labyrinth, and I couldn't for the love of me figure out where the women's section should be. So, socially awkward me decided to put on her big girl pants and ask somebody. I go to the counter, and before I could say a thing, the guy behind the counter was already furious with me. Where have you been? We have been waiting for you for hours now. Why don't you answer your phone? Followed by my very intelligent reply. What? Well, I stood there dumbfounded and scared. I was a small, shy girl, and that guy was tall and spoke too loud for comfort. He goes on with, We're going to Mr. Boss. No excuses. Come with me now. 
little dumb scared me followed that guy mostly because my brain refuses to process what just happened. This was long before I knew of the existence of Reddit. We go to a hidden part of the store, hidden by a wall, and I saw the women's section. My brain, remembering what I was here for, told my feet to go that way, but forgot about the guy. The guy grabs me by my arm and forces me in a different direction. We reach a little office, and by little, I mean cramped small. A desk, a lot of papers and orders everywhere. A man sitting on an office chair, papers in hand, the guy, and me. The guy closes the door, and none of us had any space to move. The guy greets the man as Mr. Boss and said, I found her. She was just wandering in. Mr. Boss, now looking at me, gives me a speech about responsibility and being on time. The best my brain could come up with in this situation was the question, if this store has other times for customers allowed to coming in. Did I miss the time frame? While Mr. Boss was busy with his speech, the wheels in my brain began to turn. Does he think I work here? But a boss should know his own employees, shouldn't he? I tried to muster enough courage to speak, but out came only a shy, I don't work here. Mr. Boss looks at me and then pulled out an application letter. Are you not so-and-so? Me, shaking my head. Me, looking at the picture and my face over and over again. That's not her. I looked at the picture. A girl my age, same hair and eye color, but different face features. He mumbled something about today should be her first day of work, but she never showed up, apologized, and asked me why I haven't said anything in dismissing me instantly. The counter guy brought me to the front and outside the store. Basically, I was politely kicked out. Dumbfounded, again. This store sounds like a boutique, and I would have hightailed it out of there if some random man was bringing me into a back room. I mean, there are no vans, but stranger danger is real, and my immediate thoughts would go to Silence of the Lambs. She sounds super sweet, but definitely a bit naive. Let's check out the comments to see if she got those jeans. Sol Ebus said, you got kicked out because of their F up? How rude. Jesse H replied, probably didn't want to get in trouble for dragging a 14-year-old into a back room with two grown men. Someone else said, I think they were pretty embarrassed. Like, oh, you want to buy these pants? All right. <laughs> OP replied, the guy from the counter refused to look at me directly afterwards. I counted that as a win. Surname Deleted said, what a cliffhanger. Did you get your jeans somewhere else? I can't have this unresolved. OP replied, little me got home and got the jeans the next day somewhere else with a friend in tow. Never visited that store again. And now onto our final story. Short mom thinks I am a student. On mobile and confused, this is technically an r slash I do work here lady as well as an r slash I don't work here lady story. Backstory. I have a DJ business that I've had since I was a sophomore in high school about 13 years ago in the Rockies of that one high state USA. I recently moved away from my hometown to the land of many lakes and decided to continue the business here. About a week ago, I get a call from a friend asking about a job at a high school graduation party. I agreed it's easy money. I even undercharged because I love what I do. Before I start, I do not fit into the area. I am big at six foot four, 300 pounds, tatted, and I speak with a twang that I got from hanging out with too many Hispanics, family, and ranchers. The people in this secluded puddle town are Finnish, short Finlanders. Anyways, I showed up at 4.30 after the graduation ceremony to start setting up my equipment in the high school gym. I was doing the grunt and shuffle while people were taking pictures and mingling outside. Well, after I do my sound check, get my table set up, song list ready, and everything else I need to start the night, I go to change. I usually like to dress nice, not suit and tie, but good clean jeans and a button down. After coming out of the bathroom, I talked with the vice principal since he was the one who helped me with the paperwork side of the job. We talk about school districts since I used to work for one in the colorful state and our love of motorcycles. Cue short mom, SM for short. Short mom comes power walking up to me, digs a finger in my chest and tells me, it's too early for you to start showing up now. You need to leave and come back at six when everything is set up. At first, I was kind of speechless and mad for some reason. I'm used to being yelled at and cursed out from previous jobs of security officer, but since moving here, I've only had the Midwest passive-aggressive confrontations. And this short Mama Blanca <laughs> threw me for a loop. I look at the vice principal, and he just smiles and steps back. Looking back, I think he was curious to see what I was going to do, or he didn't want to get involved with short mom. Now, I have two tattoos visible on my arms. They are very noticeable. A sword on one arm, I was young and dumb, and a butterfly on my other wrist for my grandma. I also have a full beard. 
If anything, I look older than the vice principal since he was clean-shaven and probably could be my older brother. Ma'am, I... She cuts me off. Don't call me ma'am. All I want to hear is your footsteps leaving and coming back at six. If I hadn't been desensitized to people's attitude for so long, I probably would have just walked off or tried to get the vice principal to explain, I am not a student, but do technically work for the school at the moment. My muscle memory kicked in and my arms went from folded to on my hips. Short mom did not like this. She starts laying into me, asking me who my parents were and how lazy her daughter's classmates were. And we've done so much as parents for you guys, we don't even get a thank you. I was half tempted to give her my mom's phone number, who was currently living in the land of entrapment. She would get a kick out of it and probably play along with me. Finally, she just told me to leave. I had an idea. I said, okay, went to my equipment that I'd just spent a lot of time setting up and started packing up. Short mom yells from across the gym, what the heck are you doing? That isn't yours. I calmly told the lady that the system is indeed mine and that I have receipts and pictures of when I built it to prove that it is mine. She was having none of it. Enter in event organizer. Let's call her Tammy, not her real name, and friend. Tammy, what's going on here? OP, why are you packing up? Well, this lady here told me to leave. And I don't just let my equipment stay where I don't know, short mom says. That's not yours and I can prove it. She picks up one of my business cards that I have on the table next to my laptop, takes out her phone and starts calling the number on my card. Her third or fourth clue should have been that my phone number's area code is still in Colorado's, not Minnesota. My phone starts buzzing and I answer it. This is OP with DJ Business Sound and Music Services. How may I help you today? Short mom looked pissed. I don't know if I just struck a chord or if her little angel's graduation pushed her over the edge enough, but I could almost see the steam behind her eyes and leaking through her ears. She spun on her heel and stomped off. The vice principal, who was lurking in the shadows, was laughing. The jerk was sitting on the bleachers, literally rolling on the floor, laughing his Finnish butt off. My friend asked me what that was about, and I told her that if that's how all the parent chaperones were going to treat me, I should have doubled the price. They laughed. Vice principal laughed. I laughed. The soundboard laughed. It was a fun time. I've been chuckling at the woman's own denseness the last couple of days. I couldn't have planned or done anything to improve the outcome any better. Anyways, congratulations to all seniors this year, and don't forget, an apple a day may keep the doctor away, but a Karen may need something that can reach faster speeds. <laughs> I really like this one. Opie was such a good sport about it, and like he said, put Karen in her place in the best way possible. I feel bad for Karen's child, though, since their big milestone probably centered around their Karen mom and everything going on for her on the day. Let's see what others had to say in the comments. One person said, it was a fun story, ruined a little for me in two ways. A, it was a giant wall of text, no paragraphs. B, the Narnia-esque descriptions of all the places. I'm not from the US, so I have no idea what places you were talking about. OP replied, edited the paragraphs, the colorful state is Colorado, land of entrapment is a play on words with New Mexico's land of enchantment, and land of lakes is Minnesota, all in the US. Mono Chaos had a few questions. I am super curious what happened with the Karen. Did she apologize? Unlikely. Did she explain why she thought you were a student? Did she keep insisting you were a student and your equipment wasn't yours despite all the evidence contradicting her claims? I need answers, OP replied. Not much happened after. She avoided me like the plague the rest of the night. She was busy setting up the decorations and I had talked with the school resource officers and some of the other parents before the kids showed up. She didn't really cross any lines aside from poking me in the chest. So we just went our separate ways. I just retold the story because of how she embarrassed herself. Beneficial Rain said, man, she humiliated herself in front of everyone for literally no reason. Laugh my butt off. That's not even how you would talk to a graduate. She thought she actually had authority as a chaperone. Talk about pitiful. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.